Last time we got through the pockets and we got through the button fly on the front of these trousers. This time we are going to be doing the pleats in the front panel and in the back, well these are darts in the back panel. We're going to be putting the belt loops on and we're going to be putting the waistband on. On the table here we've got the two back panels, these are the back of the legs. I've pinned the darts in place so I'll just need to run those two darts up. That gives you the shape over your hip and your bum so that they're not too tight when you sit down and when you move. On the front of the trousers there is a very small pleat. Again this is just for mobility and comfort uh, and it just means as you're moving and if you've got things in your pockets the trousers move out of the way you don't have unsightly bulges and that sort of thing. Pleat fronts on trousers are great for work clothes because they give you a lot more room. All the belt loops will be is you take your facing fabric, fold it in half, sew down there, turn them inside out and then I'll go through the process of sewing them on the waistband when we get there. For the waistband itself, again fabric shortages mean the inside is going to be this slightly different um, twill fabric that I've got and the outside will be the, the normal fabric. When I do the nice versions I'll have enough fabric to do it right. One thing I am going to put in is a waist tape. This will just go at the point where the waistband meets the legs of the trousers and just gives a bit extra strength uh, in that area because it's, it's under a lot of stress that area. The interfacing that I originally got is this which is it's supposed to be a canvas. I'm not sure exactly what it is it feels a bit like horsehair canvas but not as scratchy and not as stiff so I'm going to see how that goes. If that works well, great. If not, I'll go to my backup of a heavy cotton calico or a canvas or something of that nature. Next up then is get sewing and get some of these pieces put together so they start to make a bit more sense. For the darts on the trousers, these are quite small, so I've not marked them with any chalk. The pins will be perfectly fine. If these were a more severe dart, or a larger dart, then I would mark them. But I don't think there's any need. One thing I picked up recently, I think it was from the Closet Historian, who does a lot more darts than I do, uh, was I do have a problem with darts sometimes where when you get to the end it's a bit pointy and it can be a bit of a nuisance to press out. So I'm going to try a slightly different uh, technique on the end of this dart to try and mitigate that. So what you do is you get to this point, instead of just coming straight off the end of the fabric, you bring your stitch down and then you just go parallel for to the folded edge just for a couple of stitches and it, it will hopefully blend it out and stop it being pointy so let's see The other thing I'm going to do is normally when I get to the end I would sew down and then back again but closet historian she likes to leave a tail and then tie this off and trim the loose ends so I'm going to give that a go as well and see if that is actually better. If you've not visited the closet historian you should her channel is very good I will put a link up on the screen somewhere and I will put one in the description as well. She seems to work quite nicely. As you get to the end of the seam there, 
there isn't a point. That's just nice and flat without me doing any pressing at all. So I would say that is a good technique. I think we should be using that one again. And for these two loose ends, your top and bottom thread when the sewing machine's done, you just tie it in a regular knot a couple of times. And that should just stop the thread from coming undone or doing anything unwanted. The belt loops you saw me doing earlier, I did all of the ones I cut out, which is far more than I need, and what I'll do when I turn these out and press them, I'll pick the best ones for the trousers. Same again with the other leg. You'll also be able to tell if you've watched previous videos that the machine isn't slipping. I did find the tensioner on this machine, so it's running a lot better. But trying to find a replacement belt is still proving to be problematic. That is a really good way of finishing darts. I, I have always had problems with just this little end bit. It's always been a hit and miss, but that technique, that is magic. I like that a lot. Turning out belt loops is a chore. It's one of my least favorite jobs because it's fiddly and it's awkward, especially when they're very skinny ones like this. These three I've already done. So once we've turned them out, We'll end up with the seam in the middle there, and I'll press these flat. All under my fingernails is full of just fluff from doing this as well. So you start off with your tube that you've sewn together, and the first thing that you need to do is snip off almost all of your seam allowance along that edge. This makes turning them out easier, and it also means when you press them, you end up with uh, a lot less bulk without compromising the strength. There's a number of different ways you can turn belt loops out. Everyone has their own system. This is the one I've found the most reliable on this type, although it's not, it's not a very easy job. It still requires a bit of strength. So what I do to begin with is I sew on a length of thread onto one end I usually go with the fold end rather than the seam end because then I can't pull stitches out. Once you've done that, you thread the needle inside the belt loop. This bit's a little bit tricky, especially when you're using a short needle. There we go. Now, if you've got a very slippy fabric like a satin, usually you can just pull this end and the whole thing just pulls inside out. This fabric seems very, very grabby, which is quite frustrating. And the other thing I'm going to do is just take off these threads so they're not in my way. So you pull on there and you can see it's trying to pull the fabric through inside the tube. It doesn't quite want to go. so. I get a, I find a crochet hook is one of the best tools for this job, but use the blunt end, not the hook end. And you just sort of encourage the fabric to start going in the tube. And it is quite frustrating. There we go, that's got it started. So you can see how the fabric's rolled over on the end there. And then, in theory, you pull this thread and the whole thing goes inside out. In practice, with fabrics like this, it just doesn't happen. So you just end up having to fight it a little bit. Oops. Now 
once you've got it mostly through you then pull your thread again and as you're pulling the thread this way you're not gripping this fabric tight you're just sort of stroking it to encourage it to roll as you go and like I say this fabric is really really grabby it just it just wants to grab onto itself it doesn't like sliding against itself so it makes it quite difficult if this was wool this would probably go quite well but your problem with wool is if you use too much force you stretch it out so yeah basically just persist like that until you have enough belt loops the pattern calls for four I'm going to put six on because I want the extra security uh, and this is going to just take me a little bit of time to do. Now I'm back from the ironing board. These darts turned out beautifully. These are probably the best darts I've ever done. The belt loops are all pressed. Uh, on the pattern it says two on the front trouser legs on each panel and one on each rear, which is actually six belt loops. I thought it was four for some reason. I must have added it up wrong. So I'm probably going to do all eight of these belt loops, and I'm going to put two on each panel because, of course, remember, I had to increase this pattern from... Uh, I had to increase it several inches from its original size. So extra belt loops is not a bad idea. Just as I was doing the last bit of stitching on one of these belt loops, this run out. So, pops out the machine and it's time to fill this up. On the side you've got several little holes and the smaller one, this one here, locates on a little peg just on here and that stops this from sliding off when it's winding the new thread on. You can put your spool of thread down here and you go around underneath this little wheel which is to keep the tension on the thread. Some people like to go through the larger holes on the side of the um, bobbin. I've found that that causes me pro uh, problems on this machine. When you get towards the end it messes up the tension a bit. If I don't go through those holes I don't have that issue. So all I do is wind the thread around a couple of times and then bring the lever down. This engages the rubber wheel onto your drive wheel here, then you need to make sure that the clutch is disengaged, which is your bigger, uh, your smaller chrome wheel here. That means that the motor is driving this wheel, but it's not driving the machine, which is important. You don't want the machine running while you're doing this. And then slowly bring a little power on so it picks up the thread. And just keep your finger on top of here, if it's the taller ones if you don't, they have a habit of jumping off with the way the thread's wound. If it's a shorter one, you don't tend to have to. This piece up here guides the thread. You can see it just moving backwards and forwards. And this will rise up as the bobbin fills. Some machines have an auto stop, this one as far as I'm aware doesn't, so I just go until I've got as much thread as I need. And then to remove, you just push on there, and you're done. And now you're ready to re-thread the machine. I re-engage the clutch before I re-thread the machine, otherwise I forget, so you just turn that and lock it. If you hold onto your big wheel as you do it, then it actually locks properly. And now the machine is instead of being engaged here, you can see it's engaged at that end. So that is how you do that. Let's finish off these last bits of sewing. All the belt loops are now top stitched. I've figured out where they're going to go on the trousers. I'm using all eight of the ones that I made. Six wasn't quite enough with the extra uh, width that I've had to put on the pattern it really does need the eight belt loops, so that's what I'm going to go with. The next thing I wanted to figure out was the order of construction. 
because I thought I would be putting the waistband on and the belt loops now. There's more work to do first. Part of the reason for this, I'm just using one half of the uh, waistband, just for mock-up here, is I thought with the waistband that we'd sew this on and then we'd have the belt loops, but until I've got the front and the back of the trouser legs together, I can't put the waistband on. But just to show you the, the theory here, when you put the belt loops on, you want the seam from the turnout showing to the front because you put the belt loops on, then you put the outer face of the waistband on. You then sew along this seam here, turn your outer face up and turn your belt loops up. So then the seam is hidden inside. You'll never see that seam. And then to secure the top, you get the inside of the waistband. So you've got this all sewn and you sew the inside of your waistband to your outside of the waistband over the belt loops and then that turns over and goes to the inside trapping that part of your belt loop there so then you end up with a, a waistband with the belt loops actually incorporated into the seams but I can't do any of that yet because there's more construction work required so then I thought it would just be a case of run the side seams and be done. And that's when I learned there's more pocket work. So when you sew the front of the trousers to the back of the trousers, it will catch most of this side seam, but it won't catch this bottom edge here. So before I do anything else, I have to finish off the bottom of the pocket. And the way I'm going to do this one, I think, is with a French seam. So that's where you sew along the line, trim half of it back, roll it over, sew it again. That will be a nice strong pocket then. Once I've done both pockets, I can then sew the front of the legs to the back of the legs along this seam. And I've not decided how I'm finishing that seam yet. The pictures of originals that I've seen, this seam is either left pair, uh, just bare with nothing on it at all and the tight weave of the fabric prevents it fraying, or it's pinked, or they use something like this, a bias tape of some description, and then you, you bind the raw edges. And because I'm not sure which approach I'm going to take, I think it's going to be a case of sew it together and see what I've got. I could do this one as a French seam as well on the outer, but I'm not, I'm not sure that's going to look right because these trousers will have cuffs. And when you've got cuffs on trousers, you want just a fairly straight seam. So what I'm going to do is finish off these pockets, line up my next pieces and see what I've got before I decide how to proceed on this one because I've, I've got options and I'm not sure which one's going to be best until I actually do it. One of the trickier bits with this pattern on the outer seam of the legs is that it requires uh, some ease in the seam. Now what this basically means is you have more fabric going into the seam than the length of the seam itself. If you're using a wool that's not too bad because wool will stretch and it will shrink and it's very malleable, it's nice. This fabric has no stretch. There's just, even on the bias, because it's a, a twill um, weave, it's very, very strong and it's quite immobile. So it's very difficult to put any sort of ease into it. And to give you an idea, i just loosely run this seam. When you get to the end, there's a step. So you can see that there's too much fabric on one side. All of that distance there needs to be taken up in this seam. Now, on the original pattern, there's one particular area where you take it in. But because of this fabric, and you don't want it to gather, you want a smooth seam when you're done, um, I'm having to spread the ease out 
across a lot more of the seam, which it's not ideal, but in this situation, it's what you have to do. So I found the best way to do it because of uh, which side has the need for the extra fabric um, is to sort of lift and drape the fabric and pin as I go. And then when I put it through the, the sewing machine, I have to be very, very careful about how I do that as well. And this was the longer side. So when you do this, if you keep the longer side to the top, it does make things a little easier. Because what happens then is you have a, a curve, and of course on your outside edge of the curve it's longer than your inside edge. So when you've got a fabric that doesn't really want to ease, this is the way that I do it. It's not ideal. But it'll do the trick. You can see here how the fabric is sort of bunching up because there's too much. So that's what we're trying to take out. And you, when you do it, you don't want to have any any gathers or any puckers in it. And it's yeah tricky. Once you have it all pinned in place, you can baste it as well if you prefer. I don't need to with this one. I know how the fabric behaves. I'll go and fetch the other one, which I've already done. This one I've already done. It's not pressed, but you can see there's no, there's no puckers, there's no gathering in this seam. But there's a sort of, there's a fullness and a shape, just very loosely to the actual um, seam and when you wear this this gives a, a little bit extra room a little bit extra shape keeps everything nice and flat you can just about in the shadows make out where there's more fabric in the seam on one side than there is on the other and on the back all I'll need to do is press open this seam I still haven't decided how I'm finishing these I think I might just roll it over and just fell the seam because that's going to be the easiest way of doing it. Um, if my overlocker was working, I'd just overlock the whole thing. It'd be a lot easier. Seam's all pressed. And aside from a few little bits of fluff and loose ends, it's not turned out too badly. One side did go easier than the other. No pun intended. I, I know with a more mobile fabric like a wool this would have gone a lot easier um, a flannel particularly uh, would have squashed and stretched much nicer but I am happy overall with how that seems gone it's nice and flat now onto the thing that I don't like which is these pockets they just don't make any sense to me at all I mean given how close they are to the side seam and the angle that they're at why not just put them in the side seam why not bring them further into the trousers so that they are more of a design feature? Why Why do it like this? It's a lot of work and there's better ways of doing it. So when I do the final version, I'm definitely going to go with that theory of chopping this line out here so that you have a more modern sort of... Um, let's see... Yeah, so if you imagine that would be your pocket line and then you'd have another piece of the this fabric inside which would hide the pocket bag itself. That I think will just work better. I, I think it will be less work than this, which I'm not a fan of. So now that we've got the outer seams done, the next job will be the inner seams 
and now that I have decided how I'm going to finish off these outer seams properly, I can do the same on the inner seams. Once the inner seams are done, we can then put the waistband on, get the belt loops finished. The next stage on these, before we can put the waistband on, is to sew up the, uh, the inseam on the trousers. We've already done the outside seam, and this seam I will be hemming over to prevent it fraying. You can see it's already starting to. So I'm going to get this on the sewing machine, get that done. You do have to play about with the fabric a little bit. It has a little bit of ease on this inside seam as well. Not as much as the outer, thankfully. And I think when I do this in the wool, that's going to be a lot easier. When you've sewn this seam on the leg, I just run top to bottom on it. But then at the top, where all these seams meet in the middle, in the crotch, this area is under a lot of strain. It's always pulling and stretching when you're moving around. So it's worth going back over the last couple of inches of this uh, end of the seam before we sew the legs together. And that will just stop the inseam of the trousers from popping open. So we'll go and press these both open and then turn them the right way out so we can join the legs together. The next task is to get these two legs joined together and that's why one's inside out and one's the right way out. Because we need to put one leg inside the other. So the one that's the right way out goes inside the one that's inside out. And you take the cuff of the trouser leg and stuff that down the leg of the other one. And then match up the seams. So you've got your inner leg seam there. Yeah, obviously we don't need to be sewing the fly all the way up, else you'd never get in. But we sew up just enough to catch the bottom edge so that this is then nice and strong. So we'll start at the front edge there and then we'll sew around up the rear seam all the way to the waistband. Nothing fancy, it's just an ordinary straight stitch. The only uh, addition I'm going to do is again at the bottom where the inside seams meet. That's your high stress area so I'll do a couple of lines over that one and at the bottom of the fly as well I'll do an extra line of stitching just for security to hold this together. It's a little bit awkward to do, the trouser leg does keep trying to want to escape. strangely weighted piece to work with. But if you're patient, as you get round you can move the leg over onto your table. Trouser leg that is, not your own actual leg. This is the bit where it gets a bit tricky. So this is the centre seam. You do have to watch the fabric because it does try and bunch up. So just keep an eye on the blind side of it. I'm going to just turn the piece around and come back. And this will give me that stronger bit of stitching that I need right on the center seam. I could reverse stitch it, but the machine is not as easy to control when I reverse stitch, so I prefer to do it this way. Things over. The button fly section is quite tricky because as you're doing this one, you have a lot of layers that are trying to move independently of one another. And what I'll do now that I've got that together with a bit of hand stitching is I'll catch the bottom of the button fly placket and just that will take the stress off this area it will close up the very end of this seam. This is too much material really for my machine to go through in a controlled manner so some hand sewing there will be
perfectly fine. I'm going to put a couple of stitches in to begin with just for strength. And I'm going to try and make the rest of the stitches as invisible as possible. Although, if you're close enough to me to see these stitches, you and I need to have a talk about personal space. These are now ready for the waistband to go on. And you can see the end of the button fly there is nice and tidy. You basically, you won't really see this area when the trousers are worn, so... It's not a big worry, and what you can see is nice and tidy. Hopefully that's strong enough. I'll find out with use. I do appreciate the likes and the comments and of course the subscribes. That all helps other people find the channel and brings more information to us and pro probably more challenges and project ideas in the future. So if you know anybody that would be interested in what I'm doing, do let them know. Bring them along. Uh, yeah, and we'll see where we go with projects in the future. There's some non-sewing stuff lined up. I'm just waiting on various materials and time and, and that sort of thing. So there's a few non-sewing projects for the So What uh, content. There's a few other things I want to explore and get into, uh, techniques to learn. I mean, I'm a jack of all trades. I'll have a go at anything. I'm not an expert at any one thing, but I can usually turn my hand to whatever you give me to do. Usually. Thanks for watching, and I will hopefully see you again next time. Ta-ra!